It's another shop build day, boys. And honestly, I'm pretty excited on the progress so far. A lot has already changed since we first got this place, but now that the Civic is finally home, which I brought this thing home off camera, I didn't have time to film it, it was kind of a rush, and now we need space in the shop to work. And it's a mess. It's always a freaking mess in here. So I'm trying to get this space over here nice and organized before we start ripping apart the Evo and before we kind of start working on the Honda again. And we still got to take down this shelf right here because I don't want it. We might build something out of these shelves up in the mezzanine. So I'm going to save all the material from them, but that will be another day. As you guys can see up top in the mezzanine, I just got stuff stacked against the wall. There's no organization or shelving up there. And all the extra totes for parts are up on that other upper mezzanine above the door for the bay that the Evo's in. So we got our brand new, to me, stainless steel top Husky workbench. Got the good old Husky logo on her. And this thing's got some dings and some dents in it. So I wanna try and whack those out, do a little PDR work and make this thing look as new as possible. I wanna wipe the whole thing down because it's pretty gross. It's crazy the things you can get off marketplace for cheap. This lady I bought it off was just like, screw my ex-husband, I'm just getting rid of all of this shit. You could take this workbench for a hundred bucks. So I mean, I'm not gonna say no. I get paid 120 bucks for it in the end. She had it listed for like 300 at the start. But this is wicked, it's 24 inches deep. I don't quite know how long, it might be like 72 inches long. So our next step in today's video is to get this shelf right here completely removed. I wanna move the toolbox over so that only the locker portion of the toolbox is covering our electrical panel behind the toolbox. And then we should have enough room to put the workbench in there, put our little rolling tool cart in that space between the toolbox and the workbench. And then we're gonna have to figure out what we're doing with the empty space, if we have any between the shelf and here. Or maybe we move the shelf over and leave empty space by the door, because you guys can't tell. But if you guys look from outside, it does stick out past the door a little bit, which isn't that big of a deal, because you're not gonna be walking right there anyways. When you walk in, it's not really in your way unless you have a tote kind of stored in this direction and it sticks out. So let's get started on ripping that other shelf apart so we can get this whole area dialed in so that we can finally start working on freaking cars. Because I got a comment on the last video, which I thought was pretty funny. I always get comments like this. The guy was like totally broken English, but he said something along the lines of, we don't care about your shop build. All we care about is the Honda. I always think those comments are funny because I don't care. I'm doing this for me. I want to see my progress of the shop and be able to look back at this footage when the shop's all done and see how far we've come. I have been playing around with ideas here like crazy and I think I finally know something that I'm gonna like and it should fill the space pretty well because honestly, I'm not really liking the placement of that workbench in the corner and I'll show you why. In my opinion, having a workbench is supposed to have open space on both sides in case you need to kind of view it from an angle or whatever you're working on. It needs to be looked at a different way. If I put this stainless steel top workbench here and I build a shelf under there, it's right against the wall. This electrical panel is too close for comfort for me to be grinding stuff and welding stuff and all that on a workbench that close to an electrical panel. So I am not the biggest fan of where this is sitting right now. Look at me being all safe and stuff. This doesn't usually happen, but here's my idea. Even though this toolbox looks so good butted up right against that shelf, I think that we're gonna spread that toolbox out and this is gonna be tight, but it might fit. From this end of the toolbox here on this line where the locker joins to that end is 61 inches. From the end of that electrical panel right there over to my hot dog stick marker that I have right here is 61 inches. 
So if I make it so that just the locker is covering the electrical box, which will work good because if you guys take a peek back here, you can see that the locker isn't actually as deep as the toolbox. So that locker should cover the electrical panel. And then we can put the workbench in between the toolbox and the shelf. So we got a workbench right in behind this pillar right here, kind of like right where the toolbox is right now. And then we have that corner open for the bolt bin should fit right on the back side there of that electrical panel. And then we have this entire wall open for other stuff. Like there's obviously going to be stuff that we have that needs to get stored like engine stands, tranny jacks, stuff like that. And we can put them up there and lift them up with the mezzanine lift. But honestly, it is good to have some empty space in the shop for people to sit, hang out and whatever. Even though it is going to be limited space, I'm willing to give it a try. So let's start moving some stuff around again and see what we can make work. I don't even have everything in position and I can already tell you that this setup is a million times better. If I could get some cabinets up above that workbench there, this will be perfect. But we do have a slight problem. It doesn't fit. In that clip, it probably looks like it fits, but I'll show you what I mean. If you look at the back of the toolbox here, you see what I'm talking about with how this whole locker sits a little bit inset from the back because it's not as deep. We are like three inches or four inches off of clearing the electrical box. It is so close and if I can get it to fit like this, this is gonna be perfect. We'll just have to build a little barrier wall there on that side of the workbench. That way if we're grinding and stuff, we're not shooting sparks at the storage shelf. But this setup's gonna be way better because we can even fit the little tool cart in the corner. Everything fits perfectly that we have here. But here is our problem with this fuse box not fitting. I got all the power in the shop right now on, so I don't wanna touch anything here. I need to go in the house and shut off the breaker for the shop power but I have this whole panel loose the problem is the grommet of where the power ground and neutral wire comes in for the fuse panel is in the center of the fuse box and I need to move it to that hole right there that'll shift this whole panel over a couple of inches and then our toolbox should fit perfectly and this should be pretty easy because that is literally the only thing that's holding this fuse panel staying right where it is we can easily move this over a couple of inches because all of these wires have some slack in them so I can definitely move it over a bit. So I got a little hole saw kit. I'm gonna drill that one out there with a hole saw. That one's gonna be open there, but it's not really a big deal. It's gonna be right up against the wall anyways. And then this should clear our toolbox. All right, we are in the house now and honestly, I haven't showed you guys any of this stuff. So I'll give you a quick little peek at what we've done in the basement. So we put up some cabinets above the laundry machines and stuff down here. And then we built a full like downstairs bar kitchen style thing. We put countertops in, I switched out the sink. If you guys remember the video where I showed you guys that I bought the house, we had a little laundry sink here. So a lot has changed since then. I did all of this off camera. We also built a little pantry right here, which is nice. It gives a lot of storage for like towels or even if you wanna put drinks in here, whatever. But we got Colton living downstairs in the basement. So this is gonna be his kitchen down here and then we built some floating shelves which are super nice corner cabinet and yeah super boring adult stuff but that's okay because I guess I'm an adult now the reason I'm down here is we got to kill the power for the shop which is in the big old fuse panel right here so we look at breaker two and four that is garage so if I cut this right now we should have no power in the shop whatsoever. And I can go and mess with some wires out there. And as we walk out to the shop, it looks like it's dark in there, which it is. So I am gonna safely assume that the power is cut in here and that we should be good to work on this use panel. shop didn't blow up and this looks so good. We might be able to put one more shelf in the corner here. I did measure it. It will fit. I don't know if I want to do it yet or just leave empty space in this corner. I haven't decided, but look at how good this looks. This side of the shop is finally starting to shape up and look like a real workspace. This is freaking awesome. 
moving that electrical box over just that little tiny bit made it so that I had like, I can't even fit two fingers stacked. Like it is tight right to this line where the locker is. See if I can get a little shot for you guys back there. This thing is butted right up against electrical panel, which is awesome. And look at how tight this is too. This workbench is right against the toolbox here. And on this side, it's right against our shelf. Then the previous owner of this house had some pegboard mounted on the wall. So I think instead of having that all exposed there, I don't like that this pegboard has the center cut out for a wall outlet, but I do want to mount that pegboard there. That way, if we're grinding or anything on this workbench here, none of the material, I guess you could say, is going to shoot on all the stuff that we have on the storage bench. We'll have a little bit of a protective wall here and it fills the space out nice and we can put pegboard mounts on here and mount whatever we want on that pegboard. So I got to get some screws, some self tappers in here to secure this to the shelf and the bolt bins right here. And we got so much extra wood and stuff like that from all the shelves that were up before. I also do want to get two cabinets, which are going to go right here on this wall. And they're going to go above the workbench, two cabinets like this, so that we can hang a nice led light underneath those. We got a nice lit workspace for building engines, for doing all that stuff right there. I am hyped on this. This is looking so good and we're finally starting to use the space properly. I didn't like the setup that we had in here before. If you're looking from here though, there is one eyesore in this entire area that I absolutely hate. It is so ugly and that is this brown pillar right here. This thing is like painted brown, but like the brown paint on it just looks like rust and it looks terrible. So I'm gonna get Colton's Evo pushed out of the shop a little bit. I got some Rust-Oleum flat black paint here, which will match the rest of our shelving and workbench is nice. So I'm gonna wire wheel this whole post down and we're gonna shoot it with some paint and see how much of a difference it makes. It's such a small thing, but I just think it's ugly. So let's get out the good old rigid cordless grinder. We gotta get this wire wheel slapped on there and then we can start going to town. That is such a subtle change, but it made such a big difference. I ended up painting all the wood on the top here black as well, just kind of blend it in. But this looks so freaking good. It's almost like kind of hidden now because everything over here is black, so you don't really see the pole as much anymore. Eventually, we're probably gonna get to paint everything up in the mezzanine black and then the rest of the walls white. But for now, this looks pretty good. Don't judge my masking job on the ground. I didn't realize that all the overspray was gonna go past that much masking tape. I definitely needed to put at least two more strips around, but it's the floor, so who cares? I can get a wire wheel and just clean that up later. But I'm out of time for tonight, and we're out of time for this video. We made a lot of progress. I am doing this for you guys to show you that even though I have no idea what I'm doing, especially with that electrical box, but I figured it out and I did some research and I learned along the way. So I am making these videos to show you guys that you can accomplish anything you wanna do as long as you put your time and effort into learning how to do it. It's also crazy thinking that I'm 23 years old and I have my own garage. It still doesn't feel real. But that is all we got for this video. Peace out you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video, building a catch can setup and maybe e-tuning the Honda a little bit.